This is Joe Wayne with InstinctForSurvival.com. And this is the establishment. That's right. You know, our old friends in the establishment. You know, the establishment. The establishment that controls the right and the left and the imagined center. Yep, those guys and those gals. So, one question. One question before we start today's lesson. And uh, anybody who has an answer, please go ahead and hold your hand up high so that I can see you in the digital world. So, first question. Who and what is the establishment? Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Oh, sorry, guys. I was channeling my inner Ben Stein. And it, yeah, it's kind of funny that I would channel Ben Stein, isn't it? Because I don't know if, because I'm not there with you and I can't see you folks. I don't know if anybody held their hand up high and answered my question. We know Ferris Bueller didn't, little asshole. <laughs> but that being said, who and what is the establishment? Well, first and foremost, we all know that the uh, establishment is both wings of our political cronies in the US government are by their formal name the United States Corporation so I know a lot of you folks think you may know who and what the establishment is and for those of you who do well you'll just have to beg my pardon and uh, bite your tongue because there's a lot of us who don't or a lot of you who don't because I know exactly who and what the establishment is and what their agenda is the establishment none other than the well some call them the Rothschild Zionist you know of Rothschild banking cartel infamy and yeah, they're right. They are uh, a big part of the Zionist political agenda. But more specifically, the Zionist political agenda that owns our government, well, maybe not our government, but the United States Corporation and operators are none other than the Zionist Khazarians. And folks, I just really, you know, I've been beating my head against the wall to get all of you to understand exactly who the Khazars are, <laughs> you know? And if you don't know by now, after all of the videos and all of the explanations of the Oded Yunan plan for a greater Israel, you're never going to know. You're never going to get it. So I'm going to um, not beat you over the head with a dead fish anymore about the Khazars or the Khazarians. Because you should by now, if you're a, fam if you're a family member of the anti co -intel Pro show family, you probably already know who the Khazarians are. So, as I have told you many, many, many times... When you want to know what the enemy fears, if you want to know what they're thinking, if you want to know the enemy's secrets, you have to go to their publications of record. So, what does the Zionist publication of record, Heretz, right, in Israel, what do they have to say about the establishment? 
Well, they clearly tell you, Heretz is telling you in this article, nearly 300 Congress members declare a commitment to unbreakable U.S.-Israel bond. You know that little old APAC agreement where they come in to any up-and-comer, any um, person vying for political office in the United States corporation government, well, they have to sign an APAC agreement if they want to get any funding at all. APAC, of course, the American Israeli Political Action Committee. And man, they do a lot of acting. 300 of our Congress members, at the minimum, these are the ones that are out right owned the ones who have signed the agreement but there's a whole lot of um, political movers and shakers who either sign the agreement in private and it remains private or they're no longer in Congress 300 of our Congress members, well, not our Congress members. I mean, come on, don't fool yourself. They're congressional members of the United States Corporation, wholly owned by the United States Corporation, which is wholly owned by the Zionist Khazarians. Need more convincing? 47 senators. 47, so you have three-fourths of our U.S., con again, not our U.S. Congress, but the Congressional Representatives of the United States Corporation, three-fourths of them are outrightly owned by the Khazars. Forty-seven senators are outrightly owned by the Khazars. And... Um, you know, it just gets um, more and more overt that the United States Corporation, which is no part of the uh, Republic of America, I mean, the only thing they really own or the only power they really have to enforce their will is in that little bitty corner of their universe called Washington, D.C., which is not part of the uh, Republic of America. Not part of the United States of America. Neither is the Vatican, a part of Italy. Neither is London. These three um, bases, if you will, are the places where these foreign representatives wield their power secretly unbeknownst to the general public whenever they don't have any actual right to do so. It's all a big shell game, folks. 47 senators. 47 senators. Oh, my. My bad, not 47 senators, because if you read a 2013 article, once again from an Israeli news outlet, 76 senators, okay? who told Obama in 2013, headed by Robert Menendez, and you guys thought he was anti-Obama. Really? You thought he was anti-Iran? Uh, well, he may be, but that's just because he's ordered to be by Israel. Here's 76 senators who told Obama to give APEC the Iran war it wants. APAC, of course, the American-Israeli Political Action Committee. 
Yesterday, Senator Robert Menendez released the letter he sent to President Obama, and this was in 2013, mind you, August 6th to be specific, released the letter he sent to President Obama urging more sanctions on the Iranian people to prevent a nuclear Iran and failing that to get ready for war. So once again, the Israelis are beating the drums of war for America, right? Just like they did on 9-11, whenever they stood on top of the vans and recorded and cheered whenever the towers went down, you know, watching their handiwork. You think you have a clue who, who really perpetrated 9-11 and why? You don't have a clue unless you... Um, agree with me on the historical facts related to the event. These are the historical facts. These aren't subjective, hyperbole, you know, based on fear. You know, that most powerful emotion that the um, Zionists use to whip us all up into a lather. To whip every one of us up into a frenzy to get us to bow to their will, right? Because they own all the news outlets. Come on, six organizations own 90 plus percent of the media outlets. 90 plus. These six organizations are all headed by Zionists. And if you guys are saying, well, you know, at least we got that good old Trump, you know, Trump, the, the anti-establishment candidate, you know, the one fighting for us, you know, even though he has some really screwed up opinions on eminent domain, well, that's basically because he uses eminent domain to take away private property so he can build his casinos, right? It's supposed to be used for the public good, for a public facility that is going to benefit the public. But he's all for it because eminent domain actually benefits the Khazarians and their agents and their cronies. Well, he's not so much a libertarian on um, the whole war issue. He's wanting to go and just bomb the hell out of everyone who opposes the U.S. I mean, come on, let's make America great again. Let's make America hate again, is what he really means. You have to know how to translate the Zionist agents. Well, Donald J. Trump is no anti-establishment, anti-Zionist agent. Because words are meaningless, folks. You have to look at his actions and anybody's actions. You know, if he was a political crony for all of these years, instead of one of the puppeteers of the political cronies for all these years, we would have a record to reflect on. But we don't have that. But... As we do not have a political voting record, we do have a record. And this record is in the form of the news articles. You know, where Ivanka Trump opens up about converting to Judaism, right? Ivanka Trump opens up about converting to Judaism. That's right. The uh, fair-haired princess of the Trump empire married one Jared Kushner, which claims not to be a Jew. But can you really believe what they say? Like I said, you go to the enemy's media outlet, their journals of record, that's how you will find out what they're really up to, and what they're really afraid of. So the Heretz, once again, out of Israel, article dated August 11th, 2015. How Jewish values help Ivanka Trump stay classy. Yeah, those Jews 
which aren't really Jews, they're Khazars, are so damn classy. You ask the Palestinians that they brutalize every single goddamn day just how classy they are. I think the Palestinians, you know, they would know. Their land was stolen in 1948 by NATO and the Rothschild banking cartel and their agents and the Khazarian Zionist agents of the time that are still around, some of them, yeah. So Ivanka is staying classy by staying a Zionist, an establishment-owned Zionist. Well, here's an article, a, another article, Ivanka Trump and husband Jared Kushner tout benefits of Shabbat observance. Seems that these movers and shakers of the media world, of the uh, real estate world, he's a big time real estate mogul just like his father-in-law Donald Trump, seems they are so observant of the Jewish holy days, they even turn off their phones for 25 hours. Well, folks, if you've seen my video on Ted Cruz, you will know that he was booed off stage and he was about ready to fight the crowd over his allegiance to the Zionist Khazarians, right? They call themselves Jews. They're not Jews. Jews are black. Read your Bible. The Pharaoh didn't kick white Jews, didn't try to enslave white people. He enslaved black Jews. Okay. Get it right. Read your Bible if you believe that journal of record, right? That the uh, Flavians actually wrote. But we'll leave that there for a moment. And go ahead and watch my uh, historical video on who created the Christian religion, right? If you, I'll go ahead and leave cards to all of these videos where they booed Ted Cruz off the stage for being a Zionist agent and the history of religion. Once again, folks, the Anti-COINTELPRO Show is not your echo chamber. The truth that I provide historical documentation will not always be comfortable because when your worldview, your old paradigm that you have grown up and has instilled and been programmed into you over multiple generations, it's not very comfortable when that paradigm is crashing down around you and your mind is trying to save itself from any new information coming in. So, not your echo chamber. So what I tell you and what I provide the historical documentation for, not subjective beliefs. I don't have anything to do with belief systems as it pertains to making my videos, whenever I tell you that what I am showing or what I am sharing is historical in nature, I will provide documentation. Now I do periodically, because I do have an esoteric side uh, as well, a spiritual side. I am a human being, you know. When I talk about those issues, I will be sure and let you know there are a subjective belief system something I can't prove but that I feel is true like God I have a subjective belief that there is a God I'm no atheist but I have a historical fact-based knowledge that religion is a lie as I'm sure a lot of you do as well. That's why you're uh, here at the anti COINTEL Pro Show. And I'm sure you'll let me know uh, just how crazy you think I am if you've never spent any time investigating historical facts. How would you know? 
all you know is what you're told in the mainstream media movie complex. In the mainstream establishment, political, Zionist owned and operated government of the United States Corporation. Well, here's another article relating to Ted Cruz, where once again, and this is a September 16th, 2014 article, where he is praising Israel and he pledges his allegiance to Israel. Once again, folks, this is completely illegal what they are doing. Every time one of our so called political representatives, every time they pledge allegiance to another country, and yeah, that's including Israel. I know it seems like they're uh, just as big a part of the U.S. as the U.S. actually is, but they're not. They're a foreign government. Well, the Logan Act. The Logan Act makes this 100% illegal. 100%. Now, the Logan Act was passed in 1799, so it's been completely illegal for a whole lot of years. And the act was uh, last amended in 1994. So it was passed in 1799 and last amended in 1994. And here is what it says. Any citizen of the United States, wherever he may be, who, without authority of the United States directly or indirectly, commences or carries on any correspondence or intercourse with any foreign government or any officer or agent thereof, with intent to influence the measures or conduct of a foreign, of any foreign government or of any officer or agent thereof, in relation to any disputes or controversies with the United States, yeah, that includes Iran, or to defeat the measures of the United States, shall be fined under this title or in prison not more than three years or both. So get it right, folks. Every one of these officials of the United States Corporation, if they took the oath of office and swore on a Bible and swore to the U.S. Constitution they are in direct violation of the Logan Act and of our U.S. Constitution, and they should be in jail or at the very least fined every time they talk about their support of Israel. Every one of those 300 congressmen should be fined and in prison right now. Every one of those 76 senators and every one of those 76 senators should be fined and are in prison or both right now. They have continuously violated the Logan Act and they will continue, especially if the person who says he's an anti-politician, Donald Trump, but in reality is actually a mega politician, a puppeteer of the politicians for years now. He's in violation too if he becomes the president and continues this love affair with the Zionist Khazarians. Well, now you know. Now you know who and what the establishment is. Now you know who and what owns and operates the majority of our so-called quote-unquote political representatives in the United States of America, now you know, and hopefully you can, I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do about Donald Trump. Yeah, he's a presumptive nominee. About the only thing we can do, folks, at this point is uh, get together as the Republic of the United States of America 
what we actually are. We have never became another entity called the United States. We are still the Republic of the United States of America. If our states and our governors will stand up with the people of their locales, of the people that reside within their borders that they govern, if they will stand up and say, hell no, we're done. We are done. We are going to not take part in your tyranny, your lies, and your deception. We are not going to take part in your violation of the U.S. Constitution on a daily basis. Republicans and Democrats and every mainstream establishment political representative and potential political representative within the borders of these 50 states. Remembering the only power that uh, the representatives of the United States Corporation have are within the borders of Washington, D.C. That's it. Just like an embassy, folks. That's what D.C. is. It is an embassy of the United States Corporation. Just like the Vatican is an embassy of the Roman Empire. Just like London is an embassy, yep, right there in the middle of Britannia. They're all foreign embassies, and they should be treated as such. And when they break our laws, they should be thrown out and never allowed to enter any one of our 50 states ever again. This is Joe Wayne with InstinctForSurvival.com. Good day. Because I don't know if, because I'm not there with you and I can't see you folks, I don't know if anybody held their hand up high and answered my question. We know Ferris Bueller didn't, little asshole. <laughs> but that being said, who and what is the establishment? Well, first and foremost, we all know that the uh, establishment is both wings of our political cronies in the U.S. government are, by their formal name, it's a lesson. And uh, anybody who has an answer, please go ahead and hold your hand up high so that I can see you in the digital world. So, first question, who and what is the establishment? Bueller, Bueller, Bueller. Oh, sorry guys, I was channeling my inner Ben Stein. And it, yeah, it's kind of funny that I would channel Ben Stein, isn't it? This is Joe Wayne with InstinctForSurvival.com. And this is the establishment. That's right. You know, our old friends in the establishment. You know, the establishment. The establishment that controls the right and the left and the imagined center. Yep, those guys and those gals. So, one question. One question before we start today's The United States Corporation. So I know a lot of you folks think you may know who and what the establishment is. And for those of you who do, well, you'll just have to beg my pardon and uh, bite your tongue because there's a lot of us who don't, or a lot of you who don't, because I know exactly who and what the establishment is and what their agenda is. The establishment none other than the 
Well, some call him the Rothschild Zionist, you know, of Rothschild banking cartel infamy. 